Hello, hello, and welcome back to another installment of MSP Success Spotlight. I'm your host and moderator, Ryan Ruff, and boy, do we have a great episode teed up for you guys today. We've got Cohen Barnes, the owner and CEO of Sundog IT, joining us today out of DeKalb, Illinois. And fun fact, Cohen is actually the mayor of DeKalb, Illinois. So not only do we have a great MSP, a successful you know, business owner in the MSP space, but also the mayor of DeKalb, Illinois, joining us today. Now, a few additional pieces of information on DeKalb and, and also just Sundog IT being the company that Cohen operates. Sundog focuses strongly with network audits and assessments. So they go in to various businesses, they audit their infrastructure and really try and implement some best practices, provide, you know, those assessments to business owners to poke holes in the foundation to make sure that they can shore up their system and avoid any, any, you know, or cybersecurity threats or anything like that down the road. Now, also a few notes about Cohen. Cohen is being featured in the MSP Success Magazine, the Fall 2021 edition. So again, a tip of the cap to Cohen. But also, he's writing a book on cybersecurity that's set to be released in early of 20, early 2022. Tongue twister there. But anyway, hey, let's go ahead and bring Cohen on board to get today's conversation started. Cohen, welcome aboard from Decal. Good to see you. Thanks, Ryan. Glad to be here. Yeah, we are excited to have you aboard, and I uh, appreciate you taking you know some time away from your busy duties as not only a business owner, but of course mayor of your town uh, to jump aboard with us today. Um, but hey, Absolutely. look, I think a, a good spot, Cohen, for us to kind of get our conversation started would be to just kind of have you tell us a little bit about yourself, your company. You know, what is it that led you into the IT, the MSP space, and then of course to Sundog IT today? Yeah, you know, uh, it, it comes back to... Uh, so during high school, I, I spent a lot of time, uh, some with technology, but I spent a lot of time just having fun and, and, and just doing a lot of crazy things, which uh, I realized that going into college is not going to be the direction that I wanted to take. So mm -hmm. uh, I enlisted in the U.S. military at 17 years old. My parents even had to sign off on that, right? So I took off and went to become an airborne infantryman in the U.S. Army at age 17 and had just an incredible experience serving my country. And I'm going to lead into how this applies to IT service, believe me. So I spent three years uh, in, on active duty, traveling the world, across uh, uh, different countries and digging around in deserts and, and again, having an amazing time. But one thing that I did the entire time was I've always been an avid reader, a voracious reader. And I remember like it was yesterday being in the barracks and I was reading Edgar Allan Poe. And what came out of that was uh, I read a line that said, a wrong is unredressed when retribution overtakes its redresser. And that was a light bulb moment for me because I didn't know what that meant. But Poe, that's the only way he knew how to communicate one idea. And that idea was two wrongs don't make a right. So what that led to is at that point, I realized I wanted to do something different. I wanted to do more. I wanted to learn more. And so I realized that, you know what, I'll finish my tour. I was discharged honorably, went and uh, went to university. And my goal was to become an English major. Now, what does that have to do with IT service and support, <laughs> right? But deconstructing a work of fiction from a troubleshooting perspective is very similar to problem solving when it comes to technology. So here I am at university, I'm going through, I'm getting my degree in English and I had my first computer. And I started playing computer games and that led to uh, friends starting to ask me to help fix their computer. And one thing led to another. And I realized that uh, technology was, was my passion, my absolute love. And I'm an absolute believer in finish what you start, right? So I completed my degree in English, but I instantly, after graduation, went and worked for a high tech firm. And it was great. I was exposed to all kinds of new technology and I, I was uh, suited for it. I excelled rapidly. Even to the point of, I remember troubleshooting once uh, uh, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory called and they had a, they had a technology problem with the technology we provided and, and I was able to resolve that for them. But wow. then even the company itself, our R&D department, when they were developing new technologies, would give me those technologies ahead of time in order to figure out the bugs in it or any issues because I, I kind of had a knack for it. So it was obvious that this was uh, what I was well suited to do. So what I did then is uh, I came across a guy who had an idea and that idea was to become an internet service provider. And I left this awesome high tech company, right? To follow a, a thread of passion in the technology world. And I went and worked in the basement of this guy's apartment. And together he and I built Sundog. 
which started off as an internet service provider and then led into so many other things. So I love that story. Obviously a long road to get to Sundog. So I, one of my favorite questions that we love to ask MSPs on this show is talk to me about those, those early days at Sundog, you know, go in that basement working together to really build this company into the success story that it is today. Talk, talk to me a little bit about what that, what that looked like, what that felt like, how, how your days were spent. I want to hear about that. Yeah. You know, uh, much like, the military service piece, right? Um, and when it comes to service and, and serving others and serving something larger than yourself, it, it was a very similar experience. And it was one that, that gives me just a lot of great reward. And we would be in the basement and people, internet was becoming a thing. Now, if you think about in the early nineties, mid nineties, I'm not even sure there's graphics on the internet uh, back then, <laughs> but it was really starting to become popular. So people would come down and what was great was they, they, they wanted knowledge, they wanted to know more about this, but they were passionate about it too. So for me to be able to sit there and walk them through a particular piece of technology that was gonna expand their life and expand their horizon, uh, one, just, just met uh, a, a, a emotional need, right? To be able to continue that idea of, of service and helping others uh, grow, but uh, to be able to have all those people come in and it, it started growing more and more and what transpired was we would set them up for internet access in their home and then they would want it for their business and then they would ask us hey can you fix our computers can you do this can you do that and what we realized was we really were at the infancy of something that seemed like it was going to grow and become a big thing and it did obviously so Dan and I sitting there in the basement working on just providing with like four US robotics external modems grew into hundreds of modems, grew into thousands upon thousands of customers. And we started manufacturing our own laptops, computers and servers for everybody. But the beautiful thing was I was initially just helping individuals, like I said, expand their knowledge and expand their horizons. But then I started realizing we have the ability to be able to make a larger impact on companies and the people that work in those companies and then who they serve, whether it was a private sector company or a nonprofit, the impact Sundog was able to make, right? Was an impact across mm -hmm. thousands of people and thousands of organizations. And for me with my root in service in the military, boy, that just, uh, that just resonated with me. And I think that passion that we had delivering that service is one of the reasons why Sundog has continued to grow and has continued to be so successful. I, I love that. I mean, it really, you truly are born in the, with the service mindset as a company that is, and then obviously carrying that into your day-to-day -day interactions with clients, you know, it, you're rooted in service. It's, it's a great mentality to be. And obviously that translates into great relationships with clients and whatnot. So, so let's get into that service a little bit, Co. And, you know, I, I mentioned at the very beginning of our show that you guys have a strong focus in, in network audits and just those overall assessments. Walk me through what that process looks like. Let's say maybe it's even with a new client of yours that calls you guys up and uh, you know wants to go through a, a maybe a discovery meeting a kickoff call whatever that looks like walk me through what you guys do in this network audits and assessment space yes yeah, so since we've been in the industry for so long right i mean obviously we've learned an incredible amount uh, along that way and what we discovered years ago was we could develop a system that when someone has having an issue or their company was growing or they were outgrowing their current it guy and they started reaching out how could we make sure that we were able to communicate to them that, that we are different from others out there? And so what we did is we designed a network assessment, assessment that took us years to create, but it's, it's a whole list of not only just the knowledge that we have gained over the years and the experiences that we've had firsthand with, with prospects that have reached out to us and they had a particular issue and we were able to fix it. So now we can add that to the assessment and we can look for that next time. But what really differentiates us in this is our ability to look for new things. And, and what I mean by that real quick, I'm going to digress just for a second, if you don't mind, we are uh, Sundogs a part of an industry peer group. And what that means is every quarter myself and sometimes some of my staff, we fly somewhere in the nation and we meet with 10 other it companies and in a hotel room and we're all in non-competing geographies. And what's cool about that is we can share everything. So we share, you know, best practices, we share technology, we share financial information, culture information, you name it. It's a great, great experience. But 
our group of 10 is part of a group of 500 IT companies that all come to that same location and all break down into those individual groups of 10. Why am I telling you this? <laughs> the industry is aware of us. So not only does Dell, Cisco, uh, Microsoft, they all come to our meetings because they want to interact with us, but it's the emerging technologies. That's the real value. The emerging technology companies come as well because our industry or our peer group is well known in the industry and they want to be around us. So what we do is we invite them into the room and we share just open and honest conversation about what are they seeing out there and what we're seeing out there. I tell you this because we apply that to the network assessment. Mm -hmm. We will go and look for all the traditional things that we've learned from being an IT provider over the years. And we'll make sure that we'll go through our checklist and, and we'll look for those vulnerabilities or those security issues that, that we know about. But then we're also going to look for stuff that we haven't even seen yet, but is starting to emerge in the industry. And it's awesome because we have come across situations where there's a piece of technology that is sitting on a client's network doing nothing. It's called a persistent foothold, but it's doing nothing. And that's why antivirus firewalls and, and everything else hasn't caught it. But we know to look for these things. And what happens is that software, it's sitting there checking in occasionally to the home office. And at some point, that's what the bad actors out there utilize to deploy their ransomware or deploy whatever malicious software it is into that particular network and let it spread. So we're able to look for those type of things like persistent footholds in our assessment to make sure that the company that is having us do this is going to have a great report at the end that's going to show them all the best practices that they need to apply, but also all the security threats that we might find new and old. Co, and I love that. I mean, that's a really comprehensive approach. And, and one of the bigger themes of our show here that we love to address is, is that differentiating factor. And to me, what stands out in, in what you had just shared with us as a, as you know, just in terms of how you guys carry yourself throughout that network audit and assessment process, the differentiating factor, it sounds like, is the fact that is that collaboration effort that you guys have with with other MSPs throughout the country, you know, in flying to meet together and collaborate, share best practices. That's a pretty unique approach to be able to collaborate at that level with, in some instances, many people would view that as your competition, whether or not it is localized or, or uh, you know, uh, somebody that could pluck business away from you despite them being in a different quarter of the country. You know, in a way, that's a risk, but in another way, that's a real advantage. So, uh, so tip of the cap to you guys and your team for, for kind of taking that angle of collaboration to only reinforce your best practices along the way. Um, but look, I, you know, I want to kind of shift a little bit now and I'd love to kind of, you know, get into what this, you know, maybe a little further into what the network assessment process really looks like and maybe the best way to do that Cohen would be, would you be able to maybe share a story uh, about a company that you guys have worked with to help, you know, identify some issues with their network uh, and then, you know, provide that assessment and then help them, you know, build it to what they should have it, you know, anything like that? Yeah, there, there's, there's. Well, there's many stories, obviously, because when we've done our assessments, we've come across a, a litany of issues out there. Uh, one in particular, or really two in particular, is uh, part of the process that we go through is we'll, we'll, we'll do all the easy things, right? Uh, and one of them is, do you have a data backup solution in place? And is it working? And where is the data going? Is it staying on site or is it going off site? And we came across an organization as we're going through our process. We identified what the backup software was. And when we actually went into it and started the, the restoration process to see if we could get data off of that particular backup, there wasn't any data there. Even though the software kept reporting and was emailing their IT provider that, hey, data backed up, success, success, success. What was happening is that piece of that process of the data backup was actually transpiring. But the final piece of having a complete backup on the system wasn't there. And that organization is a lot of electronic medical records. And if they would have had to recreate right from scratch, a month's worth, six months worth or a year's worth, in this particular instance, that could have been the thing that might have put them out of business if they would have had an event. And we know right now from a cybersecurity standpoint, there are so many attacks happening right now that it's not a it's not a if, it, it really is a when is it going to happen. So Absolutely. it was awesome that we were able to discover that. We were able to bring it to light and to the attention of the client. And then that was ultimately what uh, triggered them to 
ask us to come in and remediate and they're a client of ours today, which is cool. But then there's, there's another one I, I want to share with you. Yeah, please. A client reached out and uh, we're going through our process. And what we discovered was uh, their email had been compromised. So what that meant is someone got their username and password to their email. And this was their office manager. And the bad actor was able to log in. And what they were doing is they were watching to see what transactions were happening. And they realized that this office manager, and it was great going through the, uh, the audit logs because you can see it blow by blow. But what they were doing is they were realizing that they were engaged with the client, that they were doing progress billing. And what the hacker did was it created a forwarding rule that anytime email came in from this their client, right, it would redirect it to a subfolder. And the bad actor would look at it. And if it was benign, like, hey, how was your day? It would move it back up into their inbox and mark it as unread. But what we saw is at one point, the, the, the hacker, the bad actor, sent an email to their client and said, hey, because of COVID, we had to change our bank account number and routing number. The client responded back, okay, updated my records. Now why COVID would have anything to do with that, right? But right. There was a lot of trust there and it was coming from the office manager's uh, email. Mm -hmm. The hacker had that forwarded to that separate folder and deleted it. We were fortunate that when we came in, we were able to see that happen because the next invoice that was going to go out was over a hundred thousand dollars in size and wow. their client would have just wired that money to the hacker's account. So it was awesome to be able to come in, do our assessment and stop that from happening before that transaction actually transpired. So that was a total wow. success on that part. Yeah. Wow. Cohen. I mean, that's a great story also. So, I mean, you were being rooted in service. How did that feel for you, you know, on a personal level to grow the company to what it is today and then to have meaningful interactions with clients like that where, sure, you're saving them not just a buck or two, but you're saving them potentially the company, the company's livelihood. It, like, for example, if in your, your story you just shared, if that was to keep happening and several waves of those hundred thousand dollar payments, that business might be out of business in a month or two. So, so how does that feel on a personal level, you know, to work with companies like this and make such a drastic impact? Well, I, I mentioned, uh, um, you know, I'm a veteran of the U S army and mm -hmm. so was my grandfather, my great grandfather. I mean, we have a long line of military service in our, in our family, as well as my son, uh, just returned last year from, uh, the war in Afghanistan. But well, that, we, that, we certainly that, thank you all for your service. Absolutely. Sure, sure. I, I, I appreciate that greatly. Um, but it, it's just what a lot of us just do. Mm -hmm. But what was uh, because of that, uh, obviously, like attracts like. So we have multiple veterans that work for us, including my service manager, who is currently serving as a captain in the National Guard. He's in charge of all of our service. Right. So that that military mindset of, of protection. Right. Um, and and serving something larger than yourself isn't just me, it, it, it's, it's who we are as an organization. So when you ask me, how did it make me feel? Uh, I want to respond on how it made us feel and us as an organization, um, those moments when you're able to do something like that for a prospect or when we're able to do something like that for our clients, that's what gives us uh, just an amazing amount of reward personally and, and as an organization. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of our core values is just a, you know, people are our priority. And uh, when those moments happen, we, we just couldn't be more excited. There's lots of virtual high fives and physical high fives that happen sure. in our office. And that is why we justify what we do and the impact we make. I love that. Well, Cohen, I know you, so you shared this story with us about that network assessment, right? But in terms of like, you know, a tangible item or, or, or yeah. just real material speak, if you will, what should a client, you know, in, in this, this process, going through this process with you guys expect after a network assessment uh, is provided to them? You know, is there a deliverable that you guys hand to them? How, how does that work? Yeah, it's a, again, process we've been developing over the years. And one thing that's important to us is simplicity. So what we're not going to give you is a lot of geek speak, hundreds of pages, um, because that is just information that most likely would just sit on a shelf somewhere. Right. And sure. since it's so important for us to make sure that we communicate what the problem is and that you really need to remediate it, we just have a four page report that it's, it's red light, yellow light, green light. And we give you a cybersecurity score. So based off of all the assessments that we do, where does your organization stand from what we see out there, right? And especially according to best practices. 
and we'll identify those core components like no two-factor authentication is enabled on your email. That would be a red, by the way, sure. and that would greatly decrease your score. But that report that we give you, what we'll do is we'll walk through it line by line and answer any questions that prospects have about what does this mean or why, why did I get a red and not a, a yellow maybe on, on this particular piece? And it's mm -hmm. great because it only takes about an hour to do the presentation, but they'll have the deliverable that is in plain English on what's out there. But we're able to take the time and really explain in layman's terms that, that they can understand in order to be able to figure out what their next steps are going to be in order to remediate our discoveries. I love that. So, so Cohen, if for anybody that's been, you know, listening to this conversation, you know, hearing everything that Sundog provides, as well as, you know, just hearing how you carry yourself as a, as a, you know, an individual rooted in service and as a business owner, and they're interested in, and maybe reaching out to inquire about your, your company's services or to really just schedule a kickoff call or a discovery session, how would somebody go about doing that to really get that, that conversation started? Yeah, it's, it's really easy. Uh, you can reach out to us. There's zero commitment and, the easiest way you can pick up the phone and call us, or you can go to our website, sundogit.com slash assessment. And what I recommend is let's just do a quick 10 minute call, really informal, open and honest. What are you seeing? What's your need? Why do you think you need this? Um, and if it looks like, you know what, this is a fit and we should take the time to do that, then we'll go ahead and schedule actually coming out on site and performing our network assessment. So again, you can just go to sundogit.com slash assessment or pick up the phone and give us a call. Awesome. Well, hey, Cohen, you know, before we bring our conversation to a head here, is there any final thoughts that you might want to leave our audience with just about you, about Sundog, uh, and just your work in this space overall? You know, uh, I just want to make sure everyone's hearing it on the news more and more, and you're seeing it, and chances are you probably know someone or, or yourself has had a particular issue, but the, the, the threats that are happening and that are impacting the private sector, government sector, and nonprofit sector um, they're, they're increasing day after day, month after month. IT security is something that we're all going to have to pay more attention to. So I would highly recommend whether you think you're all set, whether you, you have a, you have a guy or you have a firm taking care of you, having a third party, another set of eyes, just come in, take a look at it. It's non-invasive. They don't, they won't know no tools that we use are ever deployed and left there on the network. Um, but to have that, that second set of eyes to be able to look and see, is everything good? I, I would highly recommend it to people these days because of the threats that are out there. Sure. A completely understandable. Well, Cohen, thank you so much for taking your time today to jump aboard the show. We really appreciate you, you know, sharing your industry insights. Then, of course, those differentiating factors that really, you know, have made Sundog IT and built their success to what it is today. So first off, congratulations to you and Sundog on, on your continued success. And also thank you again for your time today. We appreciate you. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Alrighty, and look, hey, we want to take one final moment as well to thank you, our audience, for joining us on today's episode. If you liked what you saw, you liked what you heard today, remember, feel free to like, comment, subscribe to the show, and share this information with friends, family, business owners, anybody who you think would benefit from these conversations. Because, hey, at the end of the day, these conversations are meant to benefit you, to bring you some incredible MSPs that are out there doing some great work in this space. So for Mr. Cohen Barnes, I'm Ryan Ruff saying so long, and we thank you so much much for joining us on today's edition of MSP Success Spotlight.